The city in history, its origins, its transformations, and its prospects 1961, a non-fiction book on urban planning by Lewis Mumford, traces the history of cities through the centuries, from the ancient era to modernity. It received critical praise upon publication for its depth and breadth of coverage, and it won the 1962 National Book Award for Nonfiction in 1962. Mumford, born in the late 19th century, was both a philosopher of technology and an American historian. Though he worked as a literary critic, he is best known for his urban architectural studies. Mumford covers a diverse subject matter in the city of history. To keep his discussion focused, he looks at key elements, how cities originate, how they grow and transform, and what we can expect future cities to look like. He also comments on how the ideal city is when vision and goals meet reality. Another way Mumford limits his scope is by focusing largely on cities he has first-hand experience with. For older cities, Mumford examines regions he has visited. What separates Mumford's work from many works of a similar nature is his desire to observe, firsthand, the locations he writes about and how the cities feel to him. Mumford is also careful not to project modern social theories and ideologies onto older civilizations. He looks at cities entirely within the context of their contemporary social thought. Perhaps most importantly, Mumford is anti-centralization. Although he does not agree with how cities currently function, he embraces their potential. Mumford looks at the move away from the ancient hunter-gatherer to a different way of life. Before cities, clans and nomads were largely self-contained and uncooperative with only the most basic tools to protect themselves and prepare food. As they moved into a more cooperative environment, people worked together to sustain the common good. Mumford considers that cities originally began as villages whereby people gathered together in larger groups around wise men, healers, and storytellers. This creates a more nurturing atmosphere where previously separate groups unite and become a family. They realize that they have a better chance of survival in larger, protected tribes. With everyone gathered in one place, it becomes easier to pool resources and store necessities, such as water and food. Everything can be stored in homes or designated buildings. It also becomes easier to bury and worship the dead, which is critically important to earlier civilizations. It makes sense for a population to grow around this organized structure. Interestingly, Mumford notes that modern man has not developed much since our ancient ancestors. We use the same plants, the same herbs, and we farm the same livestock. We also have not domesticated any new pets. At heart, we are all still following the structures our ancestors built before us. Throughout the city in history, Mumford considers the ultimate problem with city development, the potential for exploitation. In ancient times, for example, each new agricultural and industrial discovery focused on efficiency. With improved farming and building techniques, populations grew, and overseers, such as monarchs or religious figures, supervised everything. This structure leads to slave labor and cruelty, which is not unlike what we still see today, particularly in the developing world. Mumford does, however, note that the earliest city structure promoted invention and technological development. Everyone wanted to achieve and contribute to the prosperity of the city, and so everyone worked together to devise new ways to make their lives collectively easier. In many ways, we have stopped doing this and lost this sense of collaboration. Mumford blames this loss on factors such as totalitarianism. A problem with cities through the ages is that they deny individualism, according to Mumford. The ruling classes encourage war and pillaging, and they spread the ideology that everyone must sacrifice for the greater common good. In our pursuit of the common good, we lose our sense of individuality and invention, which perhaps is why we have not evolved much further than our ancestors. Modern cities are inherently self-destructive. Mumford describes seeing construction sites, waste, overcrowding, and pollution. We are breaking down our environment instead of working with it, which cannot ever be in our best interests, collective or otherwise. Although we are supposed to be working for the common good, we are more separated than ever. The divide between the rich and poor continues to grow, and we are losing sight of the benefits living in a city can afford us. We are taking what is wrong with ancient cities and their power structures and amplifying them instead of improving them. Mumford believes that one simple remedy can change this, building cities for the same purpose as we ultimately use them. 
What Mumford means by this is that, historically, we build cities for one reason, to come together. The reality is different, all we are left with is decay, separation, and destruction. Mumford believes that the ideal world is formed of perfectly optimized cities all working together, as opposed to being divided by the existing barriers of national borders and government interference. He does not, however, explain how we can achieve this. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.